Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. This is part three of porting the LS3 heads. Each part takes, if you were to do it and you're porting all your heads, um, your both your pair, it'd probably take you a weekend to get each video done if you're just a hobbyist. So uh, that's the reason for it. Remember this, this is a very important saying I have for each one of the videos. If you think that I talk too much and you can't make it through this video, you do not have the patience to port head. You need to do something else. Because I don't want to hear you talk too much. I'm trying to teach people. So, just letting you know. So, what I did here is I did a drawing so you can see what we're working with today. And I'm going to be in the port room and I'll show you. But I don't know how well I'll be able to capture this on camera. So, bear with me. When we got done doing the bowls in the last video, um, just because the way we did it, and the head's sitting this way. So, you could think of the valves actually facing up. So, towards the sky. And this would be their entry of the port. And this is the area we're talking about. It's going to look something like this. Um, There's a horrible kind of a drawing. But you see the bulges on the bottom, which is actually the top part of the port, are bulged out while this one's that. So what we're essentially going to try to do today is we're going to smooth these up a little bit. And we'll start working the short side. And I'll warn you, this is the beginning of the hardest part of porting. Um, because the bowl part is pretty easy. This part is hard, and especially shaping the short side. Now, a couple notes we need to think about as we're porting. You don't want to remove too much material from the top at all because really the air is actually pulling down towards the short side. But then you're like, well, then I need to remove material from the short side area here. Well, this is a 15 degree head, which if it helps you think about it, there's a valve here. This it might be, that's a, 23 is be facing like this so your port might be lower but at 15 you're rolling it up it needs a taller short side so you go knocking this down it's actually a worse idea because you need more of a taller short side um, for lesser degree heads so but we still need to get some area here obviously and get it to flow more so the re real thing we're going to end up doing is making it wider so let me go over to the port room and let me show you okay here's our port i tried really hard to get the lighting where it wouldn't glare so bad so let me move the light away so you can kind of see better. Now, can you see what I'm talking about? You've got this bulge here because we ground more on this part at the bottom here. Same thing on this side. So this is the view I've got. Now my port sitting down, I don't stand up because I'd have to be standing for like 10 hours a day and I just don't want to do that. You can do it every way you want. But anyway, this is the view we have. Remember, more of the flow comes further this direction in. And less comes out here. So if you're grinding out here by this, you're not really getting anything. You're making things look pretty. Um, you might be, what about the push rod pinch? We've showed measurements before. LS3 has way too much area anyway, so any grinding here would be quite pointless. It's already got more than it needs. This little bump you hear here is for the valve cover boss. So the first thing you do before you start any grinding, just to make it easier for you, is to grind that bump down. Don't do anything else until you grind this bump, bump down flush. Do not grind that one. That's for the valve cover. I mean, that's for the valve cover, valve spring. You break through that, your head's essentially ruined. You're like, no, you can have it welded up. Yep, but it's probably going to change the orientation of the guy. Not always, but it's not a good idea. So leave that alone. So we also don't want to grind so much on the roof anyway. This being the roof of the port. We're just trying to get that contour to kind of come in better. But I'll smooth this off and get this to go this way. And I'll start grinding here. I actually grind this side first and the floor. So I, you'll, you'll see and I'll show you in the video. But I'm going to grind here and just here. And this is pretty much just smoothing things up. But this is getting that out a little bit, because this is our short side. Getting that out a little bit, make it a little bit wider, because it's wide here, and then it narrows down. So we're trying to keep this width that we had here and carrying it as far as we can. In other words, make this wall straighter. Because now, right now, it's got a bulge from where I did the, the bolt. So I need to bring it this way. You know, what about this side? Well, on this side, this is the rocker stud boss right there. I'm gonna grind that completely out, but I'm not gonna touch anything else here until I do the short side, which I'll show you. Okay, this will kind of show you what I've done. By the way, what I've been using is, this is the half inch flame, that's what this one's called, and it's on a long shank. The reason for it is, look, the grinder's all the way back here. This is actually the one I'm using, the Fordham. But my grinder's all the way, my burr's all the way in here, my grinder's like out of my way so I can see. And I can reach all the way in there if I want. So that's the reason for the long shank burrs. They get in there better. This is a half inch flame. I think I sell used ones on my website. I'll put a link in the description.
But anyway, the used ones don't take out as much material. Obviously, this one's a used one. But as you can see in the port, my little nubule is gone, and I just moved it out. And if you notice, which I don't know how well the light's going to capture this, but there we go. See that? That still remains. There's actually a dip in the port. So here's your entry, and then it actually goes higher, or dip deeper in, and it comes out. So if you try smoothing this out to make it flat, it's you're going to end up with it getting wide, and you might actually be into your intake manifold, so you might not seal. So be careful there. That's the reason why I did not remove very much material there. I should point out, too, aftermarket LS3 heads, this opening is actually smaller. Um, same with this. I kind of left it the same, but I did blend that in. Now I'm going to work this side. The only thing I'm going to do is it's going. you'd say, why don't you do the whole thing like you did over here? I won't because I'm going to switch to a different view to do that. The only thing I'm going to do right here is take out this rocker stud boss right there. It's actually where your rock arm is. I'm going to knock that off, and that's the last thing I'm doing on this side. I won't even touch here because I'm going to flip it around to do that view. That's just the way I do it. But this is getting gone because it's going to be in my way in a minute anyway. Okay, this should give you an idea of what I, what's been done. This right there is where that bulge was. You can see right there. A little hole right there that's because this is where that rocker boss is going to go through so there's going to be a hole there um that eventually get opened up it looks like well you said you weren't going to grind all the way up here i was just trying to straighten the line so as you do this there's a bump so i get here and then straighten it to make sure it's a straight line just trying to get the line work right but anyway um now i'm going to flip it over to do it the other way i show you because this is face down i'm going to flip it and that's when i start the most important part Okay, as you can see, I've changed my view. Now, this part, I actually have to stand the grind. I'm used to doing it this way for this, this part. But the biggest thing we're focusing on, and this is going to be hard to capture in the camera, this right here is the apex of the short side. What I'm trying to do is get that shape right. So getting this shape right without removing as much material on the peak because I need this material here. Now we are gonna lay it back so this eight, eventually when we switch to the other side to do the short side, which will be next video, but this apex will get moved to about here. But I need to get this shape right. So there's a lot of ways in which you could shape it. I just did some rough drawings. In other words, you can dip the center, you can make it flat, or you can actually curve one side. If you don't have a flow bench and you don't know what you're doing, the best thing to do is Leave it a flat and give it some corner radius. So you can add more or less, but that's the best thing I tell you. If you're watching my videos, do this. Don't try doing these. You don't have a flow bench, you're gonna mess things up. Plus you can have water. So uh, what I'll do is, I got my flame here, I'm gonna show you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna grind here. This is the exact movement I'm gonna have. Because if you noticed, it's still got, there's no material moved here because we've been all grinding up in here from the other views. So we need to get this in line with that. So that's coming out, take a little bit off here and same thing over here. And what I do is I usually I'll start grinding here. I'll make one line from the very beginning, knocking off that spot there because it's high right here, as you could tell. So I'm letting that and then I'm gonna drag it to here, no further. That's where the push rod pinch is. To remind myself, don't go further. Most of your airflow is, remember, is further grinding it this way towards the valve, the more air you gain, less, more. So, in there. I'm going to go across. So, let me grind that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, this part's partially done. And you can kind of tell, let me grab my pointer. It's definitely, I mean, you could see where it's lined up more than that. And yes, you do still raise up here when you're doing this side. Because remember, I did this side on the, when it was laying down. This side, I don't. So I hit here and then start raising up because I want it to follow into that contour. So this side, I don't do when it's sitting down. I'm going to flip it around and do it. But this one, it's mostly there because remember, you ground this side when I was facing the other direction. So that kind of goes in there. And you can still see some weird lines. And that's because of the casting itself. You can see how it's squared. So if I was making the bowl bigger, this would look better. You would see a more of a round icon, a round... Um, silhouette so but anyway that's what it should look like you can still see it looks like it's got a little bulge in the center but that's kind of an optical illusion so it's not the one thing is if it's not perfect it's okay because the hard thing about the flame is it doesn't always do it as well down there so sometimes you have to get your oval back out and get in here to get that shape right because the flame's got a pointed tip so it's really hard to get where the fat part is to get that out 
But don't feel bad because this isn't doing the short side. This is roughing in the, almost the shape of the short side, but not really. Eventually we'll get to it. But I'm gonna flip it back around and I'm gonna do that last side and this part of the video will be done. All right, now we're back to this view. So now you can see the short side and it's silhouette up there. Some people actually shape the short side from this view, I don't. However, I will say this, after you got doing it from what I just did, if sometimes it's easier for you to see if the silhouette to see if you miss the spot and it's not quite right. And you can actually grind it here and make it better. And that's the other thing is look deeper and you got a different silhouette than when you come up. And that's where the bold starts happening right through here. So this is flat. And then we start having a bulge right here. So when I go back and do some more refining, which I won't do on camera, right through here, this section right here in the center, I need to take some out to make that part flat still. But the short side itself, the apex, that one's actually pretty flat, even though light's trying to glide on it and make it shine like it's not. But, um, cause I'm looking at it this way and it looks pretty good. But the reason why I'm back on this shoe is cause I'm gonna get my flame back out. And now I'm gonna push this, move this wall and get this to flow in. Cause even though I was working that short side up here and see now I can actually touch that corner better. So I'm gonna get a little bit better on that corner, even though it's pretty good. I'm gonna push this over and bring this whole thing up. So I'm gonna, now I'm gonna work this part. So, and again, stay away from that lump right there at the bottom, that's where the spring pocket is. But I'm gonna push this and get that to flow into it. Cause right now there's a step. This is high, boom, step. So I need to get that to where it's rolled into it. And I'm gonna bring it all the way to here. Now that, cause I always do the short side part first, then this on this side. So now let me show, get that done, I'll show you. Okay, hopefully you can see what I've done now. Now you can really see the hole from the rocker arm, uh, rocker uh, bolt right there. That's where it would break through. So this is what it looks like. Just to give you an idea, and you're like, man, that looks horrible. You don't know what you're doing. No, just I just guess at it. That's all I do. Now uh, this is just the beginning steps. So this is where I'll leave the video for today because it's going to look rough when you first start. Although this is pretty good. You see that you can see the. Hopefully you can see the silhouette for that short side. It's pretty close. Remember, we still have to actually shape it and we do it from a different view, but it's it's looking pretty good. This side, of course, because of that spring pocket, it's kind of making it more tricky and it's some here, but you're like, why aren't you fixing that? Well, that's just not the way I order I do stuff. And you can still see kind of up here, like right there. Let me point the pointer. It looks weird because we haven't ground here, but that's just, this isn't gonna gain anything. All I'm doing is knocking off the rough casting so when I go to the beautification process, it looks better. So this will get hit with a cartridge roll just to make it not look ugly, but you get the idea. This is where we'll leave it. Next time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I kind of blend this a little bit further and I'll use something I didn't show you and I probably should have. This, uh, let me pull it out. This is a three quarter oval with more flutes. I'm gonna turn the speed way down. We're gonna blend all this out. Then we'll work the short side and the port's done, I'll show you how to beautify it. That'll be next video, so thanks for sticking in. Guys, remember, I do not port cast iron heads. I am no Superman. This is the beginning, not the end. You guys, take care.